I'll speak briefly to give some context for this. Uh, for many years I worked at City College and I realized uh, when I came to work there in 1978 that had uh, I'd been luckier, Morris might have been a colleague of mine or um, his influence would still have been felt at City College. But unfortunately Morris was fired in 1941 uh, in a uh, one of the first uh, state uh, red purges called the Rat Pruder Committee uh, purges uh, in 1941 for um, uh, and actually was the only one that about, about, about 50 members of the uh, faculty and staff at City College lost their jobs in this purge in 1941, 1940, 41, 42, um, uh, at the hands of what were then called one of the little Dyes committees, named after Martin Dyes, the chairman of the House Committee on Un-American Activities. Uh, New York State probably was the most wide sweeping and effective, and for some reason it hit City College particularly hard. So had I been luckier, Morris would have been there. The very purpose of repression, of course, is that you get rid of people and silence the voices of those that you don't like, and therefore he wasn't there. Uh, and in fact, one of only three informants at City College, or only three, so we, we were in a, in a way very lucky. You know, this was not a widespread thing. Um, subsequently became the dean. And so uh, people learned the lesson uh, of what the price was for political activism. But I, I want to just tell a story about um, what Morris's legacy might have been, and in fact was, because we rediscovered it. Uh, so I'll, I'll do that very briefly. And then if any of you uh, have, have um, questions, I would be happy to take them before the musical program starts. But you'll hear many references to the Rap Bear Committee, which is what did him in. Morris was the only one of the ones fired who actually served hard time in state prison. Um, and what I believe was the first time that the state ever brought felony perjury charges against someone. Um, did uh, 18 months to two years in, in, uh, in state prison, much of it in Danamara. In March 1936, 29-year-old English instructor Morris Chappas was teaching a section of English 4 at City College, as he had for the past eight years. He had assigned his students to read Percy Shelley's The Mask of Anarchy. The poem expressed Shelley's shock at news of the infamous Peterloo Massacre of 1819 at Manchester, England, when hundreds of men, women, and children peaceably demonstrating on a Sunday for parliamentary a reform and a living wage were brutally dispersed by the local militia with a number of demonstrators killed. Shelley concluded his ode with these expectant stanzas. And these words shall then become like oppression's thundered doom, ringing through each heart and brain, heard again, again, again. Rise like lions after slumber in vain, in unvanquishable number. Shake your, train, your chains to earth like dew, which in sleep has fallen on you. Ye are many, they are few. Morris's plan for the class, as he remembered when I interviewed him in 1981, was to show his students how the poet, as he put it, as a human being, reacts to the world as a whole in correspondence and poetry and prose. He doesn't just go up to the bird loft, Morris said. To make this point, he read from Shelley's essay a philosophical view of reform written a year after the mask, but then lost for 100 years. As he was reading into his classroom walked the English department chair, Professor Charles Francis Horn, the man who so claimed his scholarly achievement was a history of the American Legion. The visit was the first in Morris's eight years of teaching at City College. It was unannounced, which was unheard of at the time and against union rules. Horn stayed in his class no more than 15 minutes. That afternoon, Morris was on his way to the college library at one end of Lincoln Corridor, the principal thoroughfare in City College's main building, now known as Shepherd Hall, past the English department office, uh, Shelley's essay in hand, when Horn spotted him and called him into his office. What do you mean by reading Karl Marx? Horn demanded. <laughs> Morris tried to show him the text of a philosophical view of reform, but Horn turned his back on me and walked over to the window, and that was that, he said. Well, far from being over, the story was just beginning. A few 
few weeks later, at the start of his 9 a.m. class, Morris was handed a letter from Horn saying that he would not be reappointed for the fall term. Doubting that anyone else had been served such a notice, Morris ran to the Education Department office during the 10-minute break between classes and asked, as he put it, one of our office workers to make copies of the letter as a leaflet for a noontime meeting of the college's fledgling union, the Instructional Staff Association. Then he learned that 12 others had also been fired. By 3 p.m. that day, students in the hundreds, including one who is here, and we'll tell you about it personally, staged a protest outside the president's office. Within a month, the City College 13, all of them activists in the union, or in the anti-fascist association, had become a major issue in New York and beyond. Students knew and respected Morris and others because, as Morris put it, we liked the students and had a special orientation to them. We had common interests so that the students often turned to us and you would be known to people who kept their ears open. Well, Morris was no stranger to the labor movement as a young communist. He had lent a hand organizing the Transport Workers Union, the TWU, by leafleting conductors on the 6th and 9th Avenue L's. Morris remembered this as what he called a proletarian aspect of my activity, the kind the Communist Party no doubt encouraged because at the time it regarded academic activity to be insufficiently proletarian. Uh, later. As a consequence, labor activists like the TWU's Mike Quill knew Morris and the others, regarding them in Morris's sardonic phrase as, quote, not only intelligent intellectuals, close quote. In any event, at the 1936 May Day rally, reinstatement of the City College 13 was a major demand, and a contingent of hundreds of faculty and students marched with about 60 of the <coughs> faculty members decked out in cap and gown led by John Bridge, a classical languages professor at City. Um, had we had equipment, we, I would have shown you a photograph taken by the New York City Red Squad. That's right. <laughs> you have they, to wait until we have They equipment. took our best pictures. <laughs> and they tried desperately to identify everyone so they knew who to go after it and went after them, they did. Um, during the march, a mounted cop came up uh, trotting up and bent down to speak to Bridge. Morris later learned that the cop had been Bridge's student and had stopped to greet him. Well, that apparently trivial incident really represents something about Morris's work and life at that time, a quality that res resonates with progressive people of the baby boom generation, of whom I guess I am one. Um, the son of working class immigrants, Chappis had entered City College in the Halcyon days, but the entrance standard was not much higher than a 60 high school average with a 65 average in certain regents exams. Um, in other words, for very promising students and in uh, public school or in, uh, in New York City, you had a recommendation to go to city, but if you hadn't quite met the standard, then you went to Townsend Harris Hall, the uh, preparatory school for City College, and you could make up what you hadn't done before. And Morris remembered this many years later when Giuliani and Medeo tried to, uh, as they put it, end open admissions because these unwashed masses, the same language, by the way, that was used in the 1930s, uh, were going to city. And uh, Morris uh, uh, related to that. You know, he said, had it not been uh, for those admissions requirements in city, I wouldn't have been able to get an education. And I know that there were thousands and thousands of more like me who, as the entrance requirements rose, would have benefited but couldn't because they were closed out. And so he, you know, his, his uh, empathy uh, for the downtrodden really spanned the generations in ways that uh, uh, could have been instructed to, to Badillo had he been capable of learning anything, which I doubt. So, you know, I, I wanted to give you some sense of, of what Morris Shapis was like as an activist teacher, you know, and as a militant trade unionist. Um, of course, the uh, Rap Kuder Committee, the uh, Red uh, Squad Investigating Committee of the New York State Legislature, began its investigation by subpoenaing the membership lists of the teachers' union. The teachers' union went to court to try to get an injunction to stop that. They lost. And the committee simply went down the list and began calling people who were on the list. If you were 
uh, had been identified by one or more people as a member of the teachers union, then you were called. They began at City College. Um, there are other stories about this, but uh, if there were if there were more than one witness against you, you were summoned to a private hearing, you were denied the right to counsel, you were denied the right to a transcript. It was really very much like a Jack Webb FBI, if you remember that from the 50s thing, where they shine the light in your eye, and are you now or were you ever a member of the Communist Party? Um, you could answer the question truthfully, but if you did, then you couldn't refuse to answer any other questions. And the next question was, who else do you know? Who else attended that meeting? And to their credit, none of the people who were fired were willing to do that. Um, and the committee, uh, despite the reluctance of the then Board of Higher Education, the committee was able to um, convince the governing body of the what were then called the municipal colleges to change their rules so that refusal to cooperate with any legislative investigating committee was grounds for dismissal. In Morris's case, he didn't quite get there because Morris was made an example by Thomas Dewey, the then uh, district attorney uh, for New York County for Manhattan, who uh, charged him with a felony count of perjury for uh, trying in the most um, solidaristic manner to save other members in the union and other people that he worked with from the probability, the, the almost certain probability of dismissal uh, by saying, yes, I was a member of the Communist Party, but I resigned. And I only knew three other members of the party in my time there. Two of them went to Spain and were killed in combat, didn't come back. The third who came back then uh, resigned from the college and went off to be a CIO organizer. Um, well, there were two informants, actually at City 3, uh, one of whom you'll hear about later from Henry Foner. Um, and unfortunately, then Dewey had, had the uh, evidence to uh, make an example of Morris. He was convicted of a felony count of perjury and let go and did hard time. Among the others who were let go was the first and only black member of the faculty at City College at the time, Max Jurgen. It took until 1947 um, when Kenneth Clark was hired for another black faculty member to come. It, uh, that was, by the way, a union demand at the time that the college integrate its faculty uh, and um, other people who subsequently had very famous careers, some who didn't have famous careers, but this included, for example, Moses Finley, who was subsequently knighted by Queen Elizabeth, this is Sir Moses Finley, the world's um, preeminent um, classical historian who became uh, dean of a college at Cambridge University at his time. Um, uh, so that's what I lost as a result of this. And I met Morris uh, in 1980 when I began to research the history of the Rap Food Air Committee and actually uh, wrote a, uh, organized, a, helped to organize a campaign with the help of many others to uh, force the Board of Higher Education to apologize to the people who had been dismissed by its predecessor organization and to pledge that they wouldn't do it again. In any event, um, I will leave it to you to determine whether or not they have done it again. Uh, and if you have questions, I would be happy to answer them, but I don't want to hold up the program.